I don't see anyone else in the waiting room. Yeah, if we're going to do the uh, Cooper and Mr. Cooper's here, why don't we get started with that? Okay. So you got a ZBA application? Okay. Yeah. Looks like Mr. Cooper wants to put a shed. Shauna, you want to just go over this real quick? Just to... Yep. So, um, good morning. And um, so, CPN 21 054 uh, looks like a very area variance setback. Um, a shed within the minimum setback. Um, if you can see, you see on the my screen here, this is a corner corner lot. Um, you can see the shed location proposed at the bottom southeast, southwest corner of the property. He also has a, a plan on there with the measurements, Shauna, in their application. Right here. Is this the one? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So does he need one variance or two variances for the side yard and front yard or side yard and rear yard or whatever that corner yard is? The other, the pinkish lines on here are the ones that Chris drew him. Those are the setback lines. So he wants to put the shed in there. One's five foot, and then mm -hmm. the other is. There's nothing off a of grand view. What's that, Lance? What'd you say? Uh, there's no, there's no setback line off a of grand view. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. I see, I see Chris's pink lines, and I see that along what is the front of the house, and then my right side of the house i'm not sure what direction that is maybe the east side and then the rear but i don't see any on the other side of the house Street so side. i didn't know to chuck's question is do they need one for that setback or no is that not a problem looks like the number's upside down is it 13 feet from the i can't, uh, I can't tell front yard five feet Five feet from the rear yard or side yard, depending on what you want to call it. Yeah. All right. Well, definitely needs a variance. So I guess uh, we'll push it along. Mr. Cooper, you have anything to add at all? No. Um, as far as the roadside um, setback, um, I was talking to my son Eric. He was telling me that as long as I stayed as far off of the road as the different thought that I would be able to do. Um, I've got quite a distance from the from the road to the that shed. I mean I could move it a little bit if I had to. I thought I okay. was, thought I was in an area that was okay as far as the front sat back. Okay. Well it sounds like your issue is uh, if you want to stick it that far back near the property line, you need a variance for the the rear right. yard. Uh, and I guess your only issue there would be uh, how your neighbor feels about it. Uh, I, I guess, Chuck, just, I'm sorry to interrupt. One question is, is why, why do we need the variance? I mean, yeah, I was going to ask that. Is there off. a tree back there? There was. The tree's gone now. The tree's gone. Okay. So, so there, what's the reason you can't locate it? Close to the house. Yeah, closer to your. In there. What's that? You need to have room to park the vehicles. 
So it's your driveway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have to see that in the picture. Well, it's not much of a driveway, right? Yeah, we're getting ready to do some grade work and um, turn it into a real driveway. That's why we're trying to be trying to do everything at once. Yeah, I think those are good good points to make because during the variance process, we got to be able to dump, you're going to have to be able to demonstrate hardship or reasons why you can't alter the plan in a manner um, to allow them to grant you the variance. So maybe there's a way for you to identify your driveway location to show that you can't move it any closer to your house. Right. Um, to show right. that there there isn't that ability to do that. And I. I understand all that. I mean, I moved it as close as I could only be, but I don't want to be able to feel like I'm in a parking lot when I, when I pull my cars in there and I need room to open the doors. So I'm not going to go by guy. No, I think that totally it makes sense to me. I just think that those are the things that you're going to have to explain to the ZBA when it comes time to do so. And that's the information I think would be helpful. Happy to. Can you take some pictures too? And send them to us or bring them in. Yep. I'm going to mark okay. out, I have it all marked out in the yard. I'm going out there this morning to, to mark out the location. Okay. And there'll be some stakes out if anybody stops by, they can see, see the location of the shed. From my standpoint, it seems that he's got everything in place. It's just a matter of getting those those little bit of details to help them out along the way. I'm going to talk to all the neighbors and have something signed to saying they're in agreement with the location and what I'm doing and everybody's all right with it. Yeah, that would be a good idea because a lot of times the uh, ZBA members look at how the neighbors feel about the... Yeah, yeah we've already proposed. talked to them, but I can okay. get some information from them. Is that a, a prefab uh, building of, of some sort? Like a... Built on site by me. Okay. So oh, okay. I want to stay with the character of the house. Okay. Make, make sure they're, they're aware of that. If you have a concept or a picture of what it's going to look like, that would be helpful too. Um, yeah, I can do that. Okay. I put out a, just a regular drawing for Chris as far as the, the structure of the building, but I could certainly draw something up. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Uh, I guess as far as uh, referrals and all that, this uh, this will be on the, is it the July hearing, John? ZBA? July ZBA, yep. How uh, will that be Zoom or will that be at the town hall? Uh, remains being- We are, yeah, <laughs> we don't know yet. We're not sure, yep. We will contact you if there is Zoom information, though. Okay. Or maybe both. <laughs> right. All right. Okay. Are there referrals on this, please? I put uh, just Chris Jensen. <clears throat> Anybody else, do you think? Doesn't have to go to the county, right? So, yeah, no, I think no, just I, Chris. No. It's no county referral, then it's just Chris. And I don't think there's any reason to send it to any utility, uh, nope. Fletcher or County Sewer. So I think you should be good there. Okay. And then it needs a public hearing because it's a zoning hearing. Correct. So all variances require public hearing and they're all type two actions. Okay. No, thanks. I'll be set. All set. Moving on. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks, Al. Taking an order. Yeah, so Lucas, I think I saw Lucas here. Yep. Let me pull this up. 21-055 uh, Marathon Engineering representing uh, Stephen Block. This is a single family uh, teardown rebuild at 
Was it Rochester? Yep, 5481 Rochester Point Drive. I get it. Lucas, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so as you mentioned, this project is a tear down rebuild. They're rebuilding it two feet higher uh, to be above the floodplain. The actual footprint in the building is the same as existing, so all the setbacks are, are more or less the same. The rear setback from the lake is slightly larger. The setback is being increased slightly, and that, that is one of the pre existing non conformities. Um, but other than that, all the setbacks are being maintained and are in compliance. Um, so, yeah, again, the, the purpose of the project is the home is outdated, and uh, so as part of the Instead of renovating it, they're rebuilding it to elevate it above the floodplain. Do you have a uh, site plan, Sean? Oh, I'm looking at it. No. Oh. I'm looking at it. <laughs> Hold on, I have to hit. We're all looking Hold at on. each other. Yeah, um, I was looking at it. Hold on here, share screen. Yep, there it goes. There we go. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, we got to stand sideways. Uh, can you rotate yep. it at all? Okay. I can. There we there go. There go. All right. Let me get my bearings. There. All right. So this is about two lots south of Onanda. For just for general location wise. Lot from Onanda Park. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Going south. Going south. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yep. Let me... So on the lake. Uh, it fronts on. Is it Rochester Point Road or it's a? Uh, it's one of the side streets off of Westlake. Rochester Point Drive. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also a garage. Lucas, it's the finished garage. Is that what it, we're looking at at the top here? There's no, no garage for this one. There's no garage. Yeah, was that, garage. that was subdivided yeah. off? Okay. Um, let me pull up. Yeah, the, the driveway was a bit longer, or is a bit longer. In this tradition. So we're shortening that up. Um, sort of widening it out so that the lot coverage will be maintained um, even reduced slightly. Okay. Um, did the application include a statement of uh, shoreline guideline? It did. Regulations, okay. Uh, I see You've got quite a few bushes, which helps. Includes is good. Um, and the other thing would be a concern to the planning board would be the uh, stormwater management. Uh, looks like you got roof laterals going into a rain garden and the rain garden has a, a surcharge that that is back from the lake. So that's good. Trying to read all the notes as I go here. New patio. Okay, move ahead. Lucas, if you have a, uh, an elevation of the building itself, that would be helpful to the planning board in trying to uh, determine yeah. compliance with shoreline guidelines. So that if you have that uh, from your architect that either submitted ahead of time yeah, or at the, at the meeting. There should be Can some available in the package. I have to get them. I also wanted to show you, just trying to share. Uh, sorry.
Can you see that, Ariel? Uh, yep. Okay, I just wanted it for uh, location-wise there. Yep. It's general. Um, so Ananda's just off the page. Yeah, it's right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is south of the uh, uh, the water course there that runs down along the park. Right. Okay. Oops. I think that lot between this lot and Ananda was the subject of a uh, review not too long ago. No, I don't, yeah. Because um, I know we talked about the uh, protecting the bank of the water course, which is not an issue with this application, but was with that one. Uh, and I guess, you know, the, the, the maintenance and the ownership of Rochester Point Drive at the uh, I guess it's subject to a easement of some sort and it's probably recorded and it should be referenced somewhere as far as it's meets and bounds or not meets and bounds, Dean page book. Yeah, it's got a library page of that. Okay. It's, it's essentially a, a right away, but under an easement style. So I've got a library page on it. Okay, well, shoreline guidelines and uh, elevations were the concerns that I had as on this property as well as any property on the lake. And uh, if those have been supplied, uh, I'm good. Lance, you have anything uh, stormwater related? I guess not, not now. No, I mean, it looks like as if they're compliant with the site design criteria for town of Canandaigua in terms of providing uh, runoff and mitigation for that runoff. Uh, there is a detail on the plans. I was going through the notes. Um, it appears that you're going to utilize the existing water service or as much of that as you possibly can. Um, and I see that you have an on-site septic system. Uh, both of those will require us to coordinate with uh, the respective utility companies to get their review and approval of the project as we go through this process. Okay, referrals. So Tyler Ohl, watershed yeah. inspector. Lee yeah, Lucas, are you going to use the existing system or put in a new system? Use the existing. Uh, in, in just, just to clarify, the septic tank is on site. To my knowledge, the leach field is off site. There may be a, a shared system on the driveway. Uh, but yes, that's the intent is to reuse all the utility. Okay. So you just have to get uh, Tyler's busing on the existing system. Um, how about the history team? Do you think, how old is the house? Lucas? It's. Uh, it's outdated, I can tell you that. Right. It's probably old. Right. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't be tearing down a brand new one. Um, <laughs> Do you know when so it his, was built, Chris? It, it's going to be over 50 years. I can look up the date. Uh, so the history team. Yep. Chris Jensen, ECB. Yep. yep. MRB. And Jim Fletcher, just because Jim the water Fletcher. service. Yep. Yeah, planning board, county planning board. Yeah. Kevin Olvaney. On the lake, RLD, right? Right. Okay. And then Kevin Olvaney. Correct. So we're good. Lance is seeker. Lance is seeker on that. Type two. Thanks. Yeah. And if it's going to the county, I guess it'll go to the uh, July twenty seventh meeting. Yeah, Tuesday, July 27th. Okay. 
Got it. Anything else? Thank you, Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Take care. Um, uh, James, is it Criticos? 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 I know he's here. Criticos. Hi, James. Do you want to go with that one since he's here, Chuck? Uh, yeah, yeah, Canada let's, uh, yeah, this is uh, Canada Crossing. Yeah, you've a seen this. A lot we're land. all familiar with. Mm hmm yep. Just give me one second here. So you came before us with a uh, sketch plan. We gave you some ideas and now you're back to pay your money and take your chances, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What you, what'd you come up with? James, we can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I had my headset there muted. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, Peter Vars is also on the call with me. Um, as as Chuck mentioned, we went came to uh, sketch plan. Uh, we've received some comments back from the board um, and then kind of worked through our final design. So. Uh, some of the changes from when we were at sketch plan was the the building footprint itself has shrunk down a little bit um, helps fit in with kind of the awkward shape of the site um, while also avoiding um, there's a large uh, existing sanitary sewer that kind of traverses through the middle of it so getting the positioning of the building in relation to that the property lines um, was kind of important uh, one of the things we did a little bit was continue to bring the building a little bit closer to the road um, this allowed us to bring a drive lane behind the building and create a little bit more of a circular motion um, in the parking lot just to help with traffic flow. Um, we also have been able to kind of work through um, some of the more interesting uh, drainage aspects of the site. There's quite a bit of off-site drainage, which all comes at us and then uh, directly into the New York State DOT system. So we've done, um, our, our approach has been really to bypass all the drainage around the site uh, from the offsite areas and then really um, detain everything on our site for quality and quantity within a couple bioretention practices in the parking lots as well as an underground uh, stormwater chamber system. Um, as we kind of noted in the applications, we are in the process of getting you guys new building elevations uh, as well as a rendering for this. Um, we're a little bit ahead of the game uh, with from some of those sketch plan comments. So we do anticipate to have those before we get to the planning board meeting. Um, everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're gonna connect in off the existing curb cut uh, already into the site, uh, as well as you know continue to make our connection to Monroe Muffler to the south of us where we have an existing access easement. Um, so parking, we feel we're, we're pretty well parked for the different uses we're intending in here, which will be a mix of some retail, some office, as well as a uh, tasting room. Uh, the building changes with some of that um, are gonna have a second story component now to kind of maintain the square footage around 8,000 uh, usable square feet in the building. Um, the other thing we look to do is we've um, shown some patio space areas on both the north and south side of the building. Uh, as you know, our client works through the final uh, design, we were hoping to be able to accommodate those. I know that was, again, something that came up during the sketch plan review for this area. Uh, besides that, we really don't have too much work in the right of way. Uh, we're just going to be connecting to the water line, which is on our side of the property. Um, and we, and uh, we'll have gas and electric coming into the site. Um, you know, there's not really too much other space. The site's kind of tight. There's a lot of constraints with you know, the uh, existing railroads behind us, again, all that drainage coming at us. Um, and then, you know, our relationship to uh, 332. So to kind of get everything to work, it's it's a pretty tight design in terms of grading and covers and inverts and all the utilities to, to make it uh, function like this. But we think we've got a pretty good design at this point. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any other questions you guys might have. Well, first, I, I give uh, you guys, James and Peter, credit for uh, 
at least considering the uh, uh, the standards that we're trying to establish in the uptown area and specifically the form based code. Uh, I know I'd ask you to look at those standards in considering your application, putting it together. And I, you know, by moving the, the, the building further front, that certainly, you know, in, in the spirit of that, those regulations. Uh, now that you're going to two stories, I would also consider you look at some of the facades and the, uh, the looks that the uh, form-based code has regarding two-story buildings. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, make sure that uh, if nothing else, you, you meet the spirit of it. I realized the town mm -hmm. is somewhat um, tied uh, to not be able to require uh, these, uh, these amenities uh, at this point because it's not, it's not uh, written code yet. But uh, I think in the spirit of the code, and I think what we did, well, I know what we did up on Emerson for an auto dealership or an auto mechanics dealership, uh, they, uh, they provided a statement of compliance with the form-based code okay. just to you know, show that they went through the effort of looking at it and they considered it. And in some cases it was considered and where it was considered. And that would be very helpful in our deliberations with the planning board. Okay. It may help with the ZBA too. Mm -hmm. but, but certainly you're going to need relief from the ZBA regarding the front yard setback. And I I certainly wish you luck in getting that, that mm -hmm. variance. Yes, we're also, uh, we'll be asking for a rear setback variance, uh, just again, because of the weird shape of the site. Um, and we're also asking for a uh, open space reduction because of the current overlay district with the 332 corridor, it's at 40%. Um, mm -hmm. I know the form-based code, I think is closer to 15% green space. So I think we're still in line with the intent of it. It's just, uh, you know, our open space is mainly a matter of, you know, leaving enough room for the accesses, uh, you know, taking out the bioretention areas, which aren't allowed in the code per that. Um, and then some of the other, you know, the patio areas and things that we've added in. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise we would be pretty close to that 40%. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, you, you will be the model. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be the model application uh, regarding the, the, this interim period between Mm -hmm. you know, having a draft and not actually adopting the code, but at least I think it's something that we hate to let the horse get out of the barn and, yep. and come back and said, Oh, would have, should have, could have done these things on, on this property. And it, it was too late. So any cooperation you can give us would be helpful. Yeah. Sure. How much, uh, Peter, how much difference is from what you, uh, as far as variances you need compared to the uh, KFC or some of the previous applications? Um, Are you asking uh, for anything more than? No, no, we're not. Uh, and as James pointed out, we're, the, uh, the variances we're asking for are consistent to what we reviewed with the board at sketch plan and definitely are in line with the variance that were requested with the KFC application back um, uh, seven, eight years ago. Uh, the one thing, well, I, the one thing we did change, because uh, we do have to request from the planning board um, to uh, allow a, you know, a, to approve the parking uh, ratio uh, right. to the building. Uh, we maintained the 8,000 square feet of space, but as James pointed out, we shrunk the building footprint because we're to a 6,000 square foot footprint because we'll put 2,000 square feet as a second story element. So, uh, and that allowed the access drive. So we actually picked up some additional spaces on the property so that that parking ratio, uh, we're very comfortable with what the parking ratio will be for the 8,000 square feet. So in theory, we increased the, the, the parking uh, such that the, the ratio we're going to be requesting, I think, is an improvement over what was shown on the sketch plan and anything previous on previous applications. I did want to point out too, Chuck, um, Bill Dowell, the applicant here, uh, if you recall the sketch plan, we had the art artist rendering of the building. Yes. Um, and I think he still uh, is going to remain consistent with that. My point being is, 
we're not looking at a basic box rectangle, you know, with, with, you know, some windows and glass doors type thing. There definitely will be architectural elements. And I, yeah, thank you. Um, you know, appreciate. So what you see on those corners is one of those will definitely expand a little bit because of the full two story elevate or, you know, 2000 square feet of second story. So that, um, that'll get a little bit, um, uh, larger, but I appreciate the direction of of going to the form based code and, and and whatnot, such that we'll we'll be sure that we get that in the hands of the architect to have that discussion. Thank you. And I think the other big thing um, that was that came out of the sketch plan that again uh, comes in line with the Uptown Canandaigua plan is by reducing that footprint, we definitely are able to set aside or create outdoor um, gathering spaces. We have patios on each ends of the buildings now, which will be part of the justification for the reduction in the green space because we're gonna do a hard surface so that they can be outdoor usable spaces, which is right in line with the uptown plan of you know getting people you know activity around these buildings, uh, especially uh, closer to the street. Very good. Okay, um, so you've got the you've got to visit the ZBA and then come see us. Um, yep. Let's uh, look at referrals. Hey Chuck, I'm sorry. I got a, I got a couple minor questions because I think ultimately, man, the plan looks pretty good. Uh, I know that you guys were running into some some constraints as it relates to drainage. So I was just skimming through the plans and I see that you guys got pretty creative there. So uh, I can uh, I can assure that that, that that was probably a challenge, but nonetheless, um, we'll get through that part really rel rel relatively easy. I'm sorry, I'm blabbering here. <laughs> two points I wanted to point out was two things that got brought up at the board meeting. One was pedestrian access to the building. Uh, is there a way for us to get a sidewalk connection to the building? Or is that due to the bio and some of the other stuff that you have along the front? Maybe that's not an option, but I know I know that came up during conversations. And so just something to consider. Maybe I missed it. Maybe there yeah. is one. You, you mean it. out to 332 Lance? Yeah, just a sidewalk, just connection to the front of the building. Um, yeah, we, we can do that. We'll, we'll obviously have to get a crosswalk treatment in there somewhere, but that, that I, I don't yeah. see an issue with that. Yeah, it'll likely be located uh, where the existing entrance is, pretty close to that, yeah. just based That's on That's what I'm thinking, James. Yeah, yeah. Whatever makes the most sense. I leave that up to you guys. Um, just a thought. The other con the concern I have, and I know you're dealing with some site constraints, so I'm not sure if it's it's even a possibility, but that topsoil stockpile, I mean, how much <laughs> dirt are we talking about? Uh, to be honest with you, they'll go out and do some, uh, they're going to go do their geotechnical work. Okay. I don't, <coughs> excuse me, I don't expect to find much topsoil out there at yeah. all, Lance. I was wondering the same thing. Just because of the the former, you know, use of the property and whatnot, I I really don't anticipate uh, there being much topsoil out there at all. But I think right. that's something we'll coordinate with you as part of the, you know, what uh, the erosion control permit and everything. Yeah, I mean, if we determine that there's a, if you think there's, it might be enough, or maybe we got to break it up and put a little bit. I just my concern is that in that location, if there is. A decent amount and i don't know what that amount is but the due to the location 332 wind and etc we all know um if there's a way for us to relocate that to a different part of the site it would be um a little bit easier to manage but i i understand so just something okay. to think about as we go through it all right thank you Okay, so the uh, referrals, would it be Tad Gerace? Definitely, NIDOT, yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Tim McGilligan, County yep. Lake, Lake County Sewer. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Jensen, how about ECB? Yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. Jim Fletcher, MRB, County Board, County Planning Board. Frank McNara, City Fire Chief. Yep. And yep. Greg Trost, New York State DOT. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Oh, the railroad. 
Yes. 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 I'm sorry, is this is this the Canigua Farmington Water District or is this Jim's? I had to look that up. It's uh, Farmington. Farmington. All right, so then we we've been to in send... touch with Robin already, Lance. Yeah, but yes, I they thought should so be. too. I thought Robin <laughs> mentioned something about it. I just can't remember. Sometimes I forget <laughs> what that cutoff is. Is this go? To, you have Ontario County Planning Board? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Lance, are Thanks. you doing the checklist? Am I what? Are you doing the checklist? <laughs> do, do you want me to do the checklist, Michelle? Well, I'm not qualified to do them. <laughs> yeah, so. I, can, I can do it if you guys want me to, and I will do it today. I won't. Okay. Leave. I won't do it tomorrow. I'll do it today. All right. Thank you. Yes. Lance, a seeker. Um, I believe this is unlisted action. I would agree. I don't think there's anything there that would elevate it. Right. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we're shooting for the uh, 20th of the ZBA, the 27th for the planning board, assuming they're successful at ZBA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Thanks. Thank uh, you. Thanks, Peter and James. Great. Thank First. you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. You too. See you guys. All right. Is, is Scott here? He was. Yep. Scott Harder. Uh, all right. We're moving on to 21057, which is a single uh, family residential demo and rebuild on Westlake, 3551 Westlake Road. Hi, Scott. Hi there. How's everybody How doing? Tonight? I, I'm here um, via Zoom. As you know, I also invited our landscape architect, Peter Fernandez, who was logged in as well. Um, this is a, a small parcel, as um, I think you can tell from our drawing. It's about a tenth of an acre, roughly 4,000 square feet. And it's uh, got quite a bit of coverage. Um, the proposal is, as others, to tear down and rebuild most of it, probably two thirds of it, keeping the uh, lower dock and boathouse intact. Um, we met with Chris Jensen to review the revised location versus the existing location, which is shown on that sheet. Um, we are not able to achieve all the variances as applied or all the all the setbacks as applied to this site. However, we have been able to reduce the non-conformance, including uh, an existing encroachment into the highway right away with the carport. Um, so in, in speaking with Chris, um, I think the general feeling was with respect to variances that because we were reducing the non-conforming situation, we were um, not subject to zoning uh, board um, appearances. Um, the uh, the challenge of the site is to work within such a small footprint of of this lot, not only um, from the new construction, but also removal of what we're trying to replace. Um, we're aware of the sensitivity of Canandaigua Lake. We have shown um, our best idea for uh, stormwater control and sediment control, which is creating a barrier right at the lower dock area, consisting of straw bales and silt fence uh, to create a sandwich, so to speak, uh, barrier to prevent any sediment from the excavation and demolition entering the lake. Uh, we also show uh, dry wells on each side of the new structure for roof runoff to capture that. Um, we submitted a, uh, an architectural elevation, building elevation, done by Fran Overmoyer, who was the architect. Um, it occurred to me when I visited the site that, you know, the biggest challenge is trying to get the best result 
for the Lakeshore guidelines, uh, which is why um, Peter is here. Um, okay. He's developed the landscape plan and has um, worked with the owner to come up with something that is, we think, the best we can do given the amount of coverage on the site. So that's the overview. Can you see the Encore, Chuck? Uh, yes, I'm just I trying just to get a reference where we are in Westlake Road. Uh, move back in. What's the nearest intersection? Uh, okay, I see where, okay. Yep, I got, I got an idea. Here where we are. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Everybody else cool? Okay. It's really small. All right, hold on here. There we go. Wow. Well, a lot of times the uh, board members go out and look at the property, you know, pre pre demolition. Uh, though, if you have some pictures uh, from the lakeside or something, that would be helpful as to existing conditions. And then, uh, you know, uh, Peter and uh, the architect can do their magic uh, and, and show us what uh, what it'll look like eventually. That would be very helpful to the planning board. Okay. When you said the uh, roof drains or down spots are going into uh, dry wells, and then the dry wells are kind of set back from the uh, from the lake. They're not right at the edge of the lake. Correct. Right. They are they are located um, on near the northeast corner and the and the southeast corner of the um, new home. So they will they will place the water into the soil. Um, in an opportune location that's probably, I'd, I'd say, 30 or 40 feet away from uh, from the lake. Um, I'm trying to think, is that the proposed condition there? Those are existing conditions. If you can go to the yeah, yeah. Yeah. proposed yeah. condition. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, it's right behind the driveway. Yeah. Yep, see it. We, we don't have a lot to work with, so we're trying to do the best that we can. Is your uh, structure going to be any higher than the existing structure? Is it the uh, same height? Yeah. Uh, the, the, exist, the existing structure is a single story. Uh, the proposed structure is uh, story. two story. On the back, yeah. And okay. the architect, the architect has worked out the uh, roof height elevations to stay at or below your um, max, which I believe is twenty five feet. May make the shoreline guidelines a little more of a challenge now that you're coming out of the ground a little higher. There's no, uh, there's no existing trees of any size uh, along between the house and the lake? Actually, there are a couple trees existing. There's um, a couple of ash trees on the south property line and some Norway maples on the north property line. Would it help break the view of this second floor or the second story from the lake? They will. And um, we're proposing some other shade trees to frame the corners of the house and you know bring it into the uh, you know, protect the view shed. Next thing we want to do is take a boat out and get a picture from the lake and then do, you know, we can put it into and do an illustration for you. Good. Great. I think the most important part of the project too is improving the view shed along Westlake Road. We're proposing a um, picket fence with um, 
colorful plant material, hydrangeas, roses, um, and the sugar maple, things like that. So it'll help break up the streetscape. Currently right now it's pretty, it, it's um, just, you just see the fronts of the houses all the way along there up to the um, yacht club. Yeah. <clears throat> Just have to watch being in the right of way of the uh, the road, uh, what the Every county will allow and not allow. Yeah, everything is outside the right of way now. Okay. <laughs> then the only other thing you have to worry about is is snow coming off the plows, knocking the fence over. But uh, I guess you're far enough back. All right. Am I in the right? I'm in the right property here. Correct. Um. No. That's Later. no. I think we're. Am I one? I'm not sure. Uh, That's 3551. We're, we're 3551, but that's not that's us. That's not it. Oh. That's not it. All right. I just thought, I was hoping I could pull it up. Hold on. Maybe if you go one way or the other, um, yeah, cr crawl down the street. Oh, wait. That I guess that is us. Is that us, Peter? There's a carport, but right this, here. this must be an older photo because we don't have any, we don't have a picket fence. Um, yeah, I think, I guess that is us, but this is an older photo. We don't have a, we don't have a white fence. There's a carport. Yeah, that, that, that is us. Um, don't know the date on this. In so the there's corner, a driveway here. Up in the corner it says 2015. Yeah. Or is that the copyright for the? Maybe maybe that's when it was maybe that's when it was taken. We maybe. were out there recently. We were out there recently. There's no fence, but that's okay. So I, I see the, I see the carport and the driveway and and the structure. And the two trees. All yep. right. Snowplow took the fence out already. Right. <laughs> Scott, you're trying to put something back we already had. Huh? Nice try. Uh, nice club view layout club. Yeah. All right. Okay. It is tight. You're right. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. That's helpful. So some photographs from the lake of the existing and proposed conditions. Some maybe with some simulations would be helpful to the board, then you think? Uh, definitely. Yep. It's usually okay. our SOP. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, referrals. Are we ready to move on? Uh, Tyler Ohl. Leaf. Yeah. Uh, how's, do you know the age of the house, Scott? Is it over 50? Um, I'd have to look on Encore, which might give me some information. On it. So I, I would peg it at about 50. Okay. What do you think, Peter? Yes, I agree. It's, I think it's probably over 50 years old. Okay. So the town history team, the Chris yeah, Jensen. I, they like to walk through the building. I think usually, uh, you said Tyler, uh, that's on public sewer, right? You don't need, do you need Tyler? Yes, it's on public sewer. Oh, okay. So that would be the county? The county, yep. All right, then Jim Fletcher, MRB, County Planning Board. Uh, Kevin Olvini. Anybody else? ECB, uh, Michelle? Yeah, I put ECB, sorry. Got it. Seeker links. Take two. This is a take two. Thanks. Okay, we're looking at the since it goes to the county July twenty seventh meeting. Planning yeah, board. Tuesday, July twenty seventh. Very good. Planning board. Okay. Thanks, fellas. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. 21 
058 Marks Engineering for Don and Monica Miller, new house, new single family residence on Hickox Road. I don't see anybody here for them. Yeah, I don't see Brenna. Should be uh, pretty, pretty cut pretty dry. Forward. Yeah. Uh, hold on one second. This is a property that was just subdivided in April. Okay. The, of the Millers. Just off 21 or a little further down. Yeah, okay. It's going to have two driveways. Yeah, it looks like there's a big barn. Yep, two drives. Is that an issue? Existing drive to remain. So the new driveway to the house. That's fine with me, but I, I, I know sometimes Chris uh, has a concern about having two driveways to one property. Or site distance. Well, I don't know if he's okay. done his uh, determination yet, but uh, I'm sure if it's an issue, he'll bring that up. Um, Other than that, uh, I assume it's all gravel. New road. New, I can't read it. As long as we get the blacktop out at the street, New paved drive. Okay. Uh, if everything's paved, well, even if it's not, I guess, I don't think we're at building coverage or at lot coverage. Well, there is no lot coverage. Let's hurry that here. Okay. Building coverage sh should be okay. Setbacks. Is the barn set back? I don't know where the property line is there. Is that it? It's hard to see the property line on this plan. Um, hold on. Yeah, I can't. John, you want to put that in the minutes, uh, show the property line for the site? I don't see a property line at all on this plan. No, it looks like a fence or some sort of utility. New. Got it, I'll add that. Okay. And Shawna, you wanna check with Chris about the two driveways? Told, yes, I will, yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I added that also, Chuck, just to okay. clarify with Chris Jensen. Okay. All right. Maybe if we bring up Encore, though, there might already yeah, be. Yeah, I was a actually just about. Entrance. Yeah, I think he's he farms this, or at least near there. I'm pretty sure Don Miller does. Let me pull it up. Sorry, I'm still figuring out how to maneuver around here while I'm on. You're doing street. good. All right. What's going on? Okay, encore. 
Right, this doesn't have an address yet, does it? Or we just use a tax map? Uh, no. Yeah, no yeah. address yet. All right. <laughs> It may not be on Encore either because it's such a because it was just filed. Maybe I'm okay. Yeah, I don't see it. It's not coming up. No. Maybe we can. Can you just bring up Hitchcock's Road, though? Yeah. I'm going to pull up. Hold on. This was part of that Miller subdivision. I'm sorry. I may, yeah. I may have missed that. It is. Sorry, just give me a second here. You can just scroll over to it, Shauna. Yeah. Scroll over to it and. Yeah, I, I'm working on it. All right. Can you see this? Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. All right. It's down. How far down? It's right on the corner of Bliss and Hickok. Bliss. So I think right, yeah. Right here. I'm looking at the original subdivision that we did. So where where was Bliss? So Bliss, Here's Bliss, Bliss yep. Hickox, and then I think is the farms here. Yeah, I think it's the the south, the bottom, is the bottom here? property. No, just below it. Move your cursor down. That property. That that's it right, right there. Here. Yep. Yep. Let me zoom in. So you see the parcel, you click on the one to your right. Yeah. That's the one that got subdivided out and we had to do some annexation and stuff. Oh, gotcha. Okay. That became lot one and lot two was a bigger property. If you zoom out, it's behind, it goes behind us into that vacant land. Back here. Yeah, just a little bit. Actually, it's the land just to your left. Yep. Here. Yep. The other yep. side of the stream. You can see if you go, if you move your cursor to the right where the property that we were just on, there's a space, mm -hmm. just a really thin strip that connects this property to that one. Yep. So what property are we on again? So that uh, blue line stream is. Yeah, I was just going to ask. Is on the property line, or because that's where the barn would be. I think that separates the two properties. Yeah, I thought so too. The stream does. Yeah, so the farm building oh. is on that lot, and then the space that was created is on another lot that's tied to the bigger of the three lots. So the blue line stream separates the farm property from the, or the residential farm property to the vacant farm property, let's call it. Right. So what, what property are we, are they building on the, the five, five, wherever that number is up top? That's the lot they're building on right there over one. Right. Five, five. Cause they're off Hickox road, right? That's I'm true. It's a Hickox Road address. It is. 
So that would be this. So I, I'm wondering if they're building on that one where your cursor is on right now. Yeah. Well, and then, so there's an existing ag building on that lot. I don't know why he didn't show the full extent of the build of the lot, if that's the case. Right. Too. That makes it very confusing. I agree. It's hard to tell. He doesn't even have a location map. No, and exactly. So. Uh, oh, he does in the very beginning, the front cover. I see. missed it. I didn't see it. I didn't even look there. Me either. I went right to the site plan and then. Oh, well, that would have been helpful for us to uh, look at. Okay, hold on. We, it's, we just took a long way of getting there. We figured it we out. We did. We figured it. <laughs> we figured it out. <laughs> All right, hold on. Here it is. I need to figure out how to switch between images on my screen without stopping the share. Michelle, maybe you can show me how to do that. No, maybe Chris can. All right. So, yeah. all right, we figured it out after 10 minutes where we are right here. So then so, I'm wondering if he'll have two ag buildings then. Yeah, I'm wondering if that building is gonna remain Right. I don't see an existing driveway, but maybe it's just the the aerial isn't that great. Okay. We'll figure it out. Yep. Construction of a new single family attached garage and a walk up base. So I'm sorry, is that a barn? Is that what he's building then? It looks like he's building yeah, a barn. It and does a house. say it. I had to zoom on the way in. I'm sorry. Yeah, a barn. New ag barn. So New is that exempt from going through a planning board review because it's ag related? Yeah, barns are, are exempt. They don't go through planning board. Right. So the only part we'd be looking at would be the driveway and the house. Correct. I'd like to see the existing barn on this plan. I agree. Yep. Along with the lot lines, of course. The plans do not include a anything of the whole lot right it's all yeah the full extent extents of the lot do not appear yeah, to be shown it would be helpful yeah he's got an, he looks like an existing i don't know what that first plan is i didn't read it he's calling it an existing conditions plan but it doesn't even show the the building on it no it doesn't i got that i'll add it okay yeah, the existing, uh, it might as well not even, I don't, it's irrelevant. So Unless he he's not telling us something, but it would still show the building and then tell us that it's being removed, if that was the case. Right. I agree. And it doesn't even show the full extent. So, yeah, those right. are my two lots so far. Okay. All right. So, uh, Brent's going to referrals. So, question for you guys before we do referrals. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. Are we, are we suggesting this move forward with the notes that he provided that pri prior to the meeting? Are we suggesting that information be provided be in order for it to be placed on an agenda? Uh, before. Okay. I think John's, John's just, documented those, and that should be before. Yep. Nope. I'm fine with that. I just want to make sure mm -hmm. that was clear. So the applicant has a certain amount of time to get that information to the to the town for his application to be processed in July. Yep. And that'll be Friday. Friday will be oh, their deadline. That's Friday, right? Okay. Michelle? This Friday. Okay. This Friday. This Friday. Okay. Yeah. I've got uh, the items I have are the possible issue with two driveways. Clarify that by from Chris Jensen. Yep. Show the property line on the drawing, show the existing barn on the plan, and advise if it is to be removed. I, yeah, I think the existing, I would, I would just, I'm just trying to clarify, make sure I'm correct too. I would say the existing conditions plan is to be updated 
to show the full extent of the property and show the existing barn. Correct. Okay, got it. Okay, so referrals, Tyler Ohl, Chris Jensen, ECB, or no? Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Fletcher, MRB, Ag Review, Ontario yep. County Ag Review Board, uh, the Town Ag Review Board, and the City Fire Department. Anything else? No county. Okay. Or maybe that's Cheshire. The Cheshire Fire oh, Department. Good call. Um, yeah. Uh, I can, I'm pretty sure it is Cheshire. Yeah, I think it is too. Yeah, you get one of those maps. Yeah. No did, you say, did you say the ECB or not? Yes, I think so. Okay. Tyler Oley, Chris Jensen, Jim Fletcher, MRB Group, the Town Agricultural, the Ontario County Agricultural, Cheshire Fire Department, and ECB. That's what I have. Yep. So, so I did not hear Ontario County Planning Board, so we can move this up to the 13th of July. Yeah, because it doesn't need subdivision. Or there is no subdivision. So. No, nope. and we're not going to the county. No. Yep. Okay, uh, that's assuming they get the information in. Right. By Friday, yep. Right. That's assuming I get these checklists over to you today. <laughs> no, <thanks for> <laughs> <Yeah. it. laughs> I can do that. Type, type two seeker. Yep. Um, yeah, it's residential type two. Um, okay. Yep. It's the ag the ag building confusing me. So I think if if that is in fact removed, I don't think we have to to view that as part of this project. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. A Venezia. What what would a PRC be without a Venezia? <laughs> Subdivision. I was just doing emails on Venezia. All right. Uh, we are at twenty one fifty nine Venezia for April and David Dawson. Looks like a subdivision on Laura Lane. Up in God's country there. Little Cheshire. No, it's not on Laura Lane. It's no, on it's Cheshire. on, they live Middle on Laura, Cheshire. Middle Cheshire. Yep, sorry. Middle Cheshire Road. Oops. So the only question, I mean, it's not my only, but I, the driveway separation from boundary line, right? We have a 10 foot setback. I, I would imagine that it probably meets it, but it's hard to tell on this plan. I'm assuming they would subdivide the property in a manner so they don't need a variance or a waiver. Correct. So John, maybe the note would be the plans to reflect the, the, the spacing distance between the existing driveway and the proposed lot two boundary. Say that again, Lance, please. Um, the, 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 the distance between the existing driveway on lot one and the proposed boundary of lot two is to be reflected on the plans. Okay, thanks. Chuck, do you recall on subdivisions, have we been requiring the driveway existing to be paved or do we not do that on subdivisions? Not on subdivision, only if, if there's development that occurs. Yep. Maybe we can just encourage them. Mm -hmm. Well, assuming that something's built on lot two in the future, that's 
we that's when we would get that requirement as far as existing driveway right it's, uh, you know it's there it's non conforming if they did something to improve it then we'd get them but yep if they leave it and, and a subdivision doesn't trigger it i didn't think so i just couldn't yep. remember good try <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're in the subdivision, so it's, it's, it's got to go to the county. I know sometimes we ask for the lots to show a potential driveway curb cut so that we can deem it approvable, but I think with the fact that the driveway right there and he's got a site distance list, listed, mm -hmm. I don't have an issue with that as long as you guys are good with that. Well, the, the, if they don't show it, one for lot two anyway. If right. They don't right. Show I'm it. looking. Also, this 70 foot common driveway easement. Yeah, what's that too? You see that? Where is that? I mean, what it, I it I it see it, but I don't. I see the the text, but I'm. It's confusing me. Who shares the driveway? Right. All right, let me see if I can open up an aerial photograph. Is that blue area back there, a pond? Yes. Okay. It's like a slice of bread. They could uh, want the uh, access to lot two to be from that same driveway, but that that would be that would be created as part of the subdivision. It wasn't something that was already there. You wouldn't right. think. And it doesn't go all the way to the back. Unless that, like unless that unless that shed is being used by the farmer and they want to grant him easement to get to it, I don't. Otherwise, I don't know why why you need to have an easement over that. Right. It doesn't make sense. And he doesn't say, I guess, I guess it's possible he's saying it's proposed and they're going to use the same driveway for a lot too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But Right. Yeah. I guess that's the question, John, then is when should identify whether the sunny foot common easement driveway easement is existing or proposed? Whether the 70 foot common driveway easement is existing or proposed. Yes. Yes. So referrals, Chris Jensen, MRB, County Planning Board. That's it. Uh, subdivision, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah, it'll it'll need a public hearing for the subdivision. Yep. Yes. Yep. Right. It'll be unlisted. Yep. Yep. Seeker. Um, John, can we make a note too? This is Rocco's plans. Typically, he never puts a date on there. Can you just add a note? <laughs> add date. Thank you. Thank you. Everything else looks fine for me. Okay. And then just the three referrals and it's an unlisted action. Yep, it goes on the uh, 27th of July agenda. Yeah. It's not in an ag district. Does it need to go to any ag boards? I want to check on that. I was wondering okay. if that actually. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Isn't I mean, that an ag district down there? I think it is. 
that close to Johnson Road? It's definitely being farmed. I think we need to verify that. Yeah, and if so, it needs an ag data statement. Oh, he provided one. In oh, the application, okay. there is one provided. So we'll I would say, it, yeah. We'll send it to the town ag, ag committee. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or referrals. Got it. All right, the next one is a is 21-060 single state site plan approval for a driveway realignment. This is the Tishner Point property the town was going to buy. It has been sold. This is? Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Tom <laughs> Tom Schwartz. No. $5 million. <laughs> it says ABDB Silver Springs LLC, but it's the same address of Sands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 first name basis, huh? Tom. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, Michelle. <laughs> uh, okay. So what's he moved? Oh, there it is. There we go. Hold on here. So it's the same access point to the road, and then he puts an eyebrow on it, runs it around. <laughs> existing road. conditions, existing conditions. Ooh. What are all these arrows? Um, right. yeah. Willow Ave. Park area agreement. Per park area. So that's actually recorded. Huh. Oh, was no. that did that come in as part of the plan? I don't look at that yet. Park area agreement. They talked about that park area when they were thinking of buying the property. So it's it's already a filed agreement, but it's filed. If it's, if it's designated parkland, then it's a private area for the people there. Okay, so the but it's recorded in the deed. Yeah, they they, they talked a lot about it uh, at the public hearings about the the purchase that area that's on people's deeds and so on. I think this is something that I would refer to Chris Nadler and just have him clarify for the planning board if there's anything that they need as part of this because if it's actual, I, I don't believe it's actual parkland, but anytime you see park, we can't technically do work in it. Without, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying, John, I, I, but I would just prefer to have make sure that somebody's looked at what that agreement is and what does that mean? This is my suggestion. Yeah, I think that's that's I think we definitely need to do that, especially since it's the new driveway is going right through it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Goodbye, tennis court. <laughs> tennis court to be raised. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. Do you? Why is that there? Why is that detail there? I don't know. Are they planning to remove the tennis court? Yeah, uh, if you look at the uh, driveway alignment, the new driveway alignment goes right through it. I Next. think they just. I don't think the labels are all correct. This isn't the best. Who did this plan? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Why isn't he on the call? I don't know. All right. All right. What do we it's got? not real clear what is happening here. We'll go down to the uh, next drawing, Shauna, the, uh, the one you had earlier. Yeah. There you go. Right. So he's relocating the uh, driveway to go through the tennis court and, and connect to the existing driveway, something point drive on oh, that Titchener point. Yeah, well, I don't- It I looks guess. like 
it looks like this whole area is in whatever the park area agreement easement or not easement you know deeded area is so we definitely need clarification on what that means right so all right so john she he's got he's got what we typically require an existing condition split that's the very first one i think that one's right. pretty clear however that plan in my opinion should be updated to identify what is being removed mm -hmm. okay. okay and then his second plan it's it's sheet label is e a s e dash one it's called at one spot a single stage site plan approval, but then it's identified as an existing conditions plan. That should be a site plan. So that 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 plan sheet should be retitled site plan. What's the what's the sheet number again? The sheet please? number is identified as E A S E dash one. Okay, retitle that as site plan. Yeah, and it's identified as existing conditions plan. That should be retitled as site plan. Yeah. Got it. And so as part of this project, I'm assuming both the tennis court and his existing driveway connection are going to be removed, but the, none of the plans show that. It does say tennis court to be razzed. I'm talking, I'm, oh. on, I'm on a meeting. Yeah. You so see on the oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. 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 yeah and probably where is it at? And then he's got a new driveway dashed in with an easement to the south of the. Well, a new, new one. I mean, a future one. Yeah. Right there. Is that what you, Willow Ave? And that shows up on the existing conditions plan, too. So I don't, I don't okay, know. That, yeah, that's right. probably part of the original subdivision. Yeah, okay. John, if you recall the discussions, yeah, that, that Willow Ave was the access to the, to the camp. Yeah. In that structure on the out partial there, it looks like a new house with a governor's driveway. Is that a new, is that an existing house or a new, uh, go up to you existing. Mean this one, Twombly's? Yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're already there. Existing. So all he's this doing is, is a, he's looping the driveway around and putting a new driveway in front of that existing house. Okay. That's what it looks like. Yeah. But it, it's here. So who owns that house? Wombly's. Yeah, so it's Wombly. Okay. Trust. Did he buy that too? No. That's not part of the. No, I don't understand why it's going up to that house, but. Hey. That's my question. Is he gonna? Is he Help gonna buy that? Rebuild. They just built that house. Oh, it's brand new. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Are all of those lots that are remaining actual lots? Each one of those lots are shown as lot seven, lot six, lot five, six, four, five. three, two. And he would be building on what would be identified as lot one. Again, that came up in the hearings and I think it was part of a subdivision. That's why Willow Avenue is there. And it was all sort of merged into one lot for the purposes of the camp, I believe, if I recall, right? Right, John, from your, from the hearings on the purchase, I think that's what they talked about. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I, so I, we believe it's one large property. Yeah, it was probably all the deeds were merged at, at one time. It was subdivided, then deeds were merged and... Uh, I mean, that's how Rocco is showing it with the red boundary yeah. line. It's just, it's not clear because, again, the they're showing up as lots on here. So, well, you got buildings crossing property lines and all that. So, I think it might have been, I, I don't think it applies anymore, but we can ask. 
I just don't understand why the driveway is going to someone else's house over <laughs> the property line. Good neighbors. <laughs> Well, if the properties, I mean, shouldn't they be part of the application then? If I mean, we're doing something to their property. Well, you got a point. If the driveway is onto their property. I mean, the, the, it's proposed. I mean, they're not, I mean, there's an affidavit or something that acknowledges they're aware of this. I'm not completely following what again i'm assuming that they bought the, the one large lot and they're proposing a driver connection to their existing residential lot i don't i don't know the plans just aren't very clear in terms of what's being removed what's not what's existing what's not at least from my perspective i don't know the mm -hmm. site that well right and why aren't the trombley's uh, the applicants, or at least I think that's a it. good question too. Let's see what the application says. Uh, uh, see. It says ABDV Silver Springs, but that two hundred seven High Point Drive in Victor, New York, is the Sands address. That's the Sands. <laughs> it's it even more crazy. Than I know. <laughs> that's yeah. That's the SANS address for like their business office and all that. That's where I send certificates this, of compliance okay. and stuff like that. Are these guys in an ag district? <laughs> mm. No. My, oh, you RLD. Know I'm looking at RLD. Yeah, that's RLD. Yeah, I was looking. Sure. I think I was in the wrong property. I'm sorry. I was. And there's a question of whether it classifies as a park. That's still an open question. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and all that subdivision that's kind of somewhat being reflected on here, if it's not actually being subdivided that way, then it shouldn't even be shown. The yellow road, all right, those lots. Right, right. Well, you'd, oh yeah, there, okay, yep. So I, I think it's very unclear, other than the, the road, the driveway going, which is the only thing that I can pick out from this thing. It's like a little community area and that whatever they call the parkland, people can use that, that live, in, that live in that little area. They can use the remaining portions of the site? Of the parkland. And there's all kinds of deeds and things that they talked about at the meetings. So is the entire area, area considered a parkland uh, like a common area for the people who live around there except for okay. the area that he's building in which has this agreement yeah <laughs> i think the okay. kellogg's allowed that when they owned the property but now they sold the property uh mr sands might decide you know that he's not going to share it maybe it's changing yeah maybe the yeah. agreement is changing now a lot no, of questions. we need that agreement to be submitted to the town yes as part absolutely. of the application well, I'm sure Doug and uh, Sarah and the, the folks over in the manager's office have a lot of information on the background of this property. So, yeah. Yes. Just we're digging it out. Do we um, do we know the distance between the driveway and the creek? I don't know if it's come. I think I see one tie off that's. 65 feet and that's to the closest one-story frame building so i gotta believe it's over 100 feet to the driveway i think so at least <clears throat> um but i i i obviously yes we need to i'll talk to um everyone that was originally involved but i feel like the onus should be on the applicant to let us know exactly what's existing and what's proposed. We shouldn't be sitting here guessing what they're trying to do. Yep. Oh, I agree with you. 
I think the plans need some improvement and I think that agreement needs to be part of the application in order to process it so that we have a better understanding of what can and cannot be done. Right. So maybe the way we can phrase this is, John, if we have one item that has to be provided before the project can be provided processes, the plans need to be updated. As we discussed earlier, differentiating between existing conditions and proposed site plan. And then the other one is the tie off from the driveway to the creek should be shown on the plans. And then I think the existing lots that are shown or proposed lots should be shown, should be cleared up, clarified. And then I also think the parkland, what's it identified as? The park area. The park area per agreement, Liber 808. Page 419. Write a copy of that. Yeah, it should be provided to the town. All by Friday. <laughs> Yeah, if they want to meet the third, if they want to get in on thirteenth, but I can well, see. Are we also going to ask about the Trombley's awareness of? Oh yeah, I think unit? yeah, that's a good point, Sean. I think the there needs to be some clarification on who this application's for. Right. So we have we have three entities identified. Right, we have the Trombley's identified. We have. Um, ABDB Silver Springs LLC. You have SANS address. Who signed the application? Not me. Where find the applicant and so on? Doesn't say. Just it doesn't. It's hard to. Is that Rocco? No. I can't I can't read that for, for the applicant. I no. can't read it. No, that's not Rocco's signature. Okay. So did we do um, referrals or no? Not yet. I don't think it's ready. They'll um, do it all by Friday. Well, so he, are you are you saying you you want to have another get you know another meeting with uh, with whomever prior to putting this on agenda? That's a good idea because I'm just thinking I don't want all this to have to come up at the public meeting uh, along with an agenda of other items. I, I think we should get all yeah. this resolved before we go before the. I agree. I think it'd be good. Yeah, I think it. this was it was so high profile. Yeah. I mean, it just had a lot of a lot of public involvement. Um, I would feel more comfortable if we had more time, so we know exactly what. And, and, you know, I agree. Speak a little Justifiably, bit we have a lot of questions, mm -hmm. and no one no one was here to answer them. So, nope, oh, I agree. Right. I think we can Next reach out to Rocco so. and let them know that they need to come in and talk to us and provide that information that we identified. Okay, we've done that before. We like say determined and complete and then discuss with the staff. Yep. Okay. So no referrals yet until they come back with, to the staff for, for information. I think that sounds good. Also means no checklist. <laughs> Got it. Okie doke. All right. Don, does that work for you? Is that good? That works for me. Um, yeah, that'll give me time also to talk to, to Doug too and Sarah. There were lots of people on the hearings when they were talking about this. There were like 75 or 80 people. And exactly. All, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to miss something, 
either important details. Okay, we uh, done with the PRC agenda. Yeah, I, I don't just, see anything else. I just want to make sure we're good for next Tuesday. Uh, so we got a couple. Uh, I, uh, uh, Michelle, I see you advertised the hearings. Thank you. So we're good to go there. We're, uh, I guess, a couple pending ZBA applications for tomorrow night that have to occur. At least one. And the, and the, west, the west corners one. Yeah, west, yeah. west corners. And the others seem cut and dry, although time may be time consuming, but we'll get through it. We will not have Gary and uh, Bob will be in Denver, so he'll hopefully be able to connect. Yeah, I think the big one is that Pierce Brook subdivision by Morels. So that one, like with Aura or however you pronounce them, and then um, the Canandaigua Shores one, the only thing that we'll be able to do at this meeting, assuming the board's ready to do so, would be to begin the secret process and coordinate review. Right, on Morel. Correct, on Morel, yep. yes. Yep. yep, declare uh, declare ourselves lead agency and start the clock. Yep. The intent, yep, yep. If we so choose to move forward, that would be the first thing that we would do. Okay, all right. Very good. Great. Thanks all. Thanks, uh, Sean. Thank you. And Michelle, I'm getting on, and Sean on, John, I'm getting on the checklist now, so I'll, I'll hopefully get them to you relatively soon. <laughs> Thank you, Lance. Right. Thanks, thanks, Lance. All right. Hey, Shana, Thank you, I'll, guys. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> okay. Conservation subdivision. Yes, I'll be, I'll be right in. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Girls. <laughs>